Hey guys, John V here from Phone Arena. Right now you're watching our in-depth video comparison between the LG Optimus G and the Apple iPhone 5. These are both flagship devices from the respective makers. And of course, there's a lot to like about them. The iPhone 5 was released not too long ago and it's pretty much holding steady on top of the uh, smartphone world. And soon we're gonna have the LG Optimus G which packs a lot of nice stuff. Quad-core processor with 4G LTE connectivity. So we're gonna see how these two flagship devices stack up against one another. So without a doubt, we like how both handsets have that sense of premium attached to, the, to their designs. Uh, they're solidly built all around and they utilize high quality choice materials. You have the brush metallic casing of the iPhone 5 and of course you have the glass surfaces of the Optimus G. But between the two, we still have to go with the iPhone 5 on this one, especially considering the price. Uh, it's both thinner and lighter than the Optimus G. And on top of that, just easier to hold, more comfortable than the wide figure of the Optimus G. Uh, the other thing is that the iPhone 5 just maintains a cleaner appearance at all times versus the Optimus G, which tends to smudge up very quickly, both on the front and the rear. However, we do like the uh, crystal reflection pattern has in the rear. Seriously folks, these two handsets have the best displays on the market just because they win when it comes to details, color reproduction, and outdoor visibility. So with the iPhone 5, it's a 4-inch retina display with a resolution of uh, 1136 by 645 pixels versus the larger 4.7 inch HD IPS plus display on the LG Optimus G and it features a resolution of 1280 by 736 pixels. So when it comes to pixel density, the iPhone 5 edges it out a little bit. It's 326 PPI versus 320 on the uh, on the Optimus G, but it's negligible just because even with fine text in the web browser, we're able to make them both out with very little issues, a lot of good details and clarity with them. And seeing that they are both IPS plus IPS displays at heart, of course we're going to get some natural looking colors with them. It doesn't fall victim to some of the oversaturations found with some other display types out there, but we do notice that the iPhone 5 exhibits just a little bit more warmer tone, so whites tend to come out a little bit on the yellowish side, but it's not that bad at all. And finally, uh, they have great viewing angles, of course, so they maintain their their uh, their clarity in, in any way you look at them, but we do notice that the iPhone 5's brightness output slightly higher. Both are really good in outdoor usage too, but again, the iPhone 5 just delivers on that thanks to its higher brightness output. Even though the LG Optimus G features three capacitor buttons below its display, we didn't have any issues as far as accidental presses just because they're spaced far away from one another. But of course, the iPhone 5, there's no issues with that just because it utilizes a physical one. Above the displays, we find their earpieces and both front-facing cameras. It's a 1.3 megapixel one on the Optimus G versus a 1.2 megapixel one on the iPhone 5. We definitely like the feel and response of both power buttons on each handset. It's on the top edge on the iPhone 5 and on the right side of the Optimus G. But with the iPhone 5, it sticks out just a little bit more. At the same time, we could say the same thing about their volume controls just because they're distinctive to the touch and they offer a good amount of response when pressed. On the bottom edge of both handsets, we find their respective dock connection ports. It's the proprietary lightning jack with the iPhone 5 versus the more traditional micro USB port on the LG Optimus G. And finally in the rear, we have their respective cameras. It's an 8 megapixel eyesight camera on the iPhone 5 with LED flash versus a 13 megapixel autofocus camera with LED flash on the LG Optimus G. Both can shoot 1080p high definition videos. Seeing that these two smartphones feature closed designs, there's no access to their internal batteries, but as far as storage is concerned, the iPhone 5 is of course available in 16, 32, and 64 gigabyte capacities versus the Sprint LG Optimus G, which is only available in 32 gigabytes. When it comes to performance, there's no kidding that these two handsets deliver the goods in that area just because they're very quick and responsive from basic tasks to more complex things. They don't slow down whatsoever. And you can tell this moving between the home screen here, they're both very fluid in motion. The iPhone 5 is powered by a dual core 1.3 gigahertz Apple A6 processor with one gigabyte of RAM. And the, uh, the LG Optimus G is powered by a quad core uh, 1.5 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro processor with two gigabytes of RAM so when you look at this from a spec sheet standpoint, the Optimus G really stands out over the iPhone. But when it comes to real world usage, there's no difference between the two. They are exceptionally fast and fluid. Even though the Optimus G has a more spacious keyboard layout than the iPhone 5, they're both usable in the same manner just because they're very responsive and accurate. With the iPhone 5, its autocorrect feature is really good in keeping a good pace, but both handsets are really nice to use. 
Another item these two smartphones share is 4G LT connectivity, so you get fast data speeds with both handsets. But as far as their web browsing experience is concerned, we gotta say both are very likable in many aspects, just because pages load up in a good amount of time. On top of that, they exhibit some really nice pinch gestures and kinetic scrolling, and they render things on the fly relatively quick. And overall, it's a superb experience with both. When it comes to music players though, uh, there's no love given to the uh, LG Optimus G just because it has a rather conventional approach. We could say the same thing about the iPhone 5 just because it's the same UI that we've been seeing for quite some time, but it's differentiated itself in the fact that it has the cool 3D-like effect with cover flow. As far as audio quality with the respective speakers, they're both equally strong, but the iPhone 5 just edges out just a tiny bit more. The two are naturally adept in playing high definition videos with no problems at all, so they move very swiftly, but we have to go with the LG Optimus G just for a little bit, just because you get the larger display, which is more ideal for the situation. So the iPhone 5 has the slight advantage when it comes to taking photos with its 8 megapixel iSight camera versus the 13 megapixel one on the LG Optimus G. Uh, outdoor shots with good lighting, it's really hard to say which one produces the better visuals just because they're very similar, but we do notice that the iPhone 5 handles dynamic range a lot better than its competitor. And top of that, when it comes to uh, macro shots or fine details, it's sharper looking with the iPhone 5. A little bit of softness attached to the uh, LG Optimus G, and here's a good example of that. You can see the difference in quality here. A little bit more detail, uh, you know, sharpness with the iPhone 5. It's in low lighting though that's most notable. Uh, the iPhone 5 really has a better, but does a better job when it comes to exposure. It doesn't look as grainy compared to the LG Optimus G. And on top of that, it just looks brighter. However, when it comes to high definition video recording, the iPhone 5 wins it by a long shot just because it really captures our attention more with its sharper looking visuals. Uh, the, the LG Optimus G just has a lot of soft details with it. Both move swiftly at 30 frames per second, capture clear audio recording, but we also notice that the LG Optimus G is just flawed by some noticeable artifacting when we're panning very quickly. In our experience, we find the iPhone 5 to have the more inviting call quality between the two. Now, the earpieces with each handset are strong enough to make out voices, but with the uh, LG Optimus G, voices tend to have a little bit of hollowness, and on the other end of the line, our callers complain about some muffled tones that they're hearing. That's not a problem with the iPhone 5, just, just because voices are both clear and distinctive on both ends of the line, but when we switch to using the speakers, we do notice a little bit of distortion on both. Check out the battery life between the two. We have to say that it's pretty much identical to one another. We don't find one to be any superior compared to the other. Now we were strictly using both handsets on Sprint's EVDO 3G data network instead of LTE just because it's not available in our area. And in our experience, we're able to get by through a solid day of normal usage on a full charge, whereas with heavy usage, we're able to get by at least a work day out of it. But again, you can expect those numbers to drop considerably if you're in an LTE area. From a spec sheet standpoint, and some people might favor the LG Optimus G when you factor in its price point. Both are available at $200, but knowing that the LG Optimus G just has some more favorable internals, such as the quad-core processor versus the dual-core one, some people might like that. But ultimately, when it comes to real-world usage, both are wonderful. It just depends on which platform experience you want more, the easier iOS or the more complex uh, Android experience. But both are wonderful in pretty much everything they have to offer, from their beautiful designs, excellent performance, and just fast response. There's a lot to like about both handsets. So if you'd like to learn more about both devices, guys, you can check out our website, phonerena.com. It's John V. Thanks for watching.